Welcome to the weekend edition of the Nightly Nuge, where we always talk about the outdoors. And Ted, I want to jump right into it. I know you're going to talk about the just the incredible week that you've had hunting because I've seen picture after picture, perfect arrows, perfect bullets. But I want to talk about a little bit of the negative of it. Um, North Dakota, apparently there's a cry to ban uh, deer baiting in North Dakota to the point where the North Dakota legislature is actually trying to push legislation to keep the DNR from doing that. So it sounds like the North Dakota legislature is on the right side of that issue. Um, You saw we're in Alaska of all of the states, Ted, they want to ban bear baiting in Alaska, which is just I, I mean, how can that possibly be? But of course, that's a state that produced Lisa Murkowski. So anything's possible. And then I know you're on the cutting edge of what's going on in Pennsylvania, where they're trying to put push opening day of hunting season to a Monday, which makes no sense to me. Those are three topics that I have on my mind. Pick one, pick all. What's your take? Well, you know, I'm right in the middle of it. I'm so fortunate. I'm blessed. I, I'm really honored and humbled that every day of my life, Keith, I hear from people from every state. Literally, I just celebrated the 50th anniversary of George and Kay Fairber up there in uh, Wasilla, Alaska, because he was my guide on a bear hunt, caribou and moose hunt in 1977. And then we went back and hunted with George Fairber many times. So happy anniversary to George and Kay Fairber up there in the heart of Alaska, real Alaskans. So I know all about Alaska bear baiting and Alaska bear management. And I know up in uh, Lake Tahoe, for example, you're not allowed to use hounds or bait. And the bears are in the liability column, destroying property every day, you know, destroying livestock every day. Our tax dollars go to compensate people whose cottages and, and expensive homes are destroyed by bears. And in Pennsylvania, what would be the worst day in the world to optimize family hours of recreation and the revenues generated for opening day of deer season than the Monday after Thanksgiving, after the families have had a Thanksgiving break, now everybody's got to go back to work on Monday. And that's the opening day. It's the traditional opening day of Pennsylvania's deer season. And Pennsylvania was the number one deer hunting state with over a million hunters. Now, Dan Laughlin, Dan Laughlin is the representative in uh, Pennsylvania. He's a Pennsylvania senator. And I'm also working with a guy named Randy Sarducci, I believe his name is. He wanted to push it back to Monday because we finally got it to open on Saturday, which is more capable for families to enjoy the important and essential harvest of the overpopulation of deer to make room for next year's fawns so they don't get smashed by Buicks every three minutes on Pennsylvania highways. Anybody have any questions? Call 1-800-NUMNUT and Michael Moore will explain why personal hygiene is superfluous. And then when it comes to baiting deer and baiting hogs and whatever you want to bait, would you go fishing without a worm on your hook? You need to catch the fish out of that body of water so they don't overpopulate and destroy the fish habitat. Would someone please talk about this in a school in America someday? If we don't harvest the surplus deer and the bear and the pronghorn and the pheasants and the geese, if we don't and the ducks, if we don't harvest the surplus in a responsible science based, meaningful pattern based on population dynamics, sustained yield, habitat, carrying capacity, dear God, why aren't these truisms, these scientific truisms ever mentioned in the schools because they want them to become animal rights activists because the final agenda of the animal rights activists, if you look in the Bible and watch their actual agenda and activities, they want to slaughter human life because they want to end the diet, the food production of human life. We've talked about this before. Pennsylvania, every state, North Dakota with the baiting of deer, you have to kill these deer. They will overpopulate if you fail one season to harvest the surplus. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's bear or turkey. The land can only support so much life. Your house can only support so many people. You wouldn't let thousands of people live in your house. You only have room for X amount of people. Wildlife habitat only has room for X amount of wildlife. The season of harvest, happy Thanksgiving for the harvest from God's miraculous renewable pantry. Somebody write this down. How stupid. Stupid can people be? So there's a lot of controversy out there. So I would recommend that everybody who wants thriving wildlife and the thriving wildlife habitat to keep these wildlife sacred resources in optimal healthy conditions and our air, soil and water production from that wildlife habitat, please join Keith and I at HunterNation.org. 
and circle the conservative wagons because where you don't use hounds and bait for bear, they overpopulate and get hit by Mercedes Benz downtown Naples. Governor DeSantis open the damn bear season in Florida. The nuisance complaints are out of control. They're overpopulated. It's irresponsible to not harvest the proper science based surplus of these wildlife resources every year. And I dare anybody anywhere, anytime with any credentials or or college degrees, I dare you to debate me on any of this stuff. Because if you don't use proven methodologies, hounds and bait for bear, hounds for mountain lions, bait for deer and bait for trout and crappie. If you want to debate me, I dare you to come on here and tell me why a Monday opener would be better than a Saturday opener in Pennsylvania and why you should you should reduce the opportunity for people to enjoy the great outdoors, harvesting the essential surplus of these precious wildlife creatures every year. I'm right. The antis are not only wrong, they're evil. You know what, Ted, I'm going to see if our producer, Tim, can get Brian Smith, who's the state representative um, from Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, who happens to be a Republican that wants to push that back to Monday. Now, I know you, you and I think it's illogical, makes no sense. Do you know what his point of reason is to do that or what he's stating as the reason to do that? They claim number one tradition, and they also claim wrongly. It's just at the, the statistics are absolutely wrong. I'm actually going to have uh, State Senator uh, uh, D- Dan Laughlin um, come on because he's been fighting these guys. I mean, everybody take a b- deep breath and just think. If you wanted to participate in the essential harvest of the annual surplus production of deer in Pennsylvania, would it be better for you? on the Saturday during the Thanksgiving break when you're already off work and you're with your family and you can go to your cabins and you go to your hunting ground, or would it be the Monday after Thanksgiving where you got to go back to work and go back to school? It's, it's It's unbelievable that there's a debate. Now, Randy and this guy you just mentioned, they'll tell you that, well, we've got all these uh, fundraisers that we do on Friday uh, and Saturday getting ready for the Monday opener. You, you, I'm not buying it. I'm just when in, when a state has an opening day on a Saturday, it optimizes the family hours of recreation and the revenues. Keith, people must realize the revenues, not just hunting license and permits and fees and sporting goods and ammo and supplies, but food, lodging, restaurants, gas, motels, hotels, ice, beer, coolers, <laughs> butchers, taxidermists. The, the, the land that people own, gazillions of dollars of land and equipment just for the hunting season. Would it be optimal on a Saturday or would it be optimal on a Monday? Who could possibly make that claim? We should have him on because Randy's very sincere. He's been trying to push it back to Monday diligently. He, he brings up these points that I'm sorry, they're full of holes. Randy, I love you. And I know you're making all these claims, but I, I I believe you're wrong, man. I believe the ultimate opener in Pennsylvania, you're you're off for Thanksgiving. You're all together and you can go on Saturday when everybody can go. Not everybody can go on Monday. You know what, Ted? I think this is uh, three topics that Hunter Nation needs to get involved in immediately. We need to reach out in Alaska and, and, and battle that. Uh, we need to get up in North Dakota and support that legislation that will prevent bait bait banning uh, by the DNR. And we need to get uh, up in Pennsylvania and make sure this doesn't go crazy. It sounds like good people that are just taking bad advice. And I think it's something that you and, and, and our team at Hunter Nation needs to get in the middle of. What do you say? Well, think of this. In Michigan, they don't allow baiting for deer because they lie that it will cause deer to have nose to nose contact. But then the USDA comes in and they bait the deer and shoot them. And now it turns out that next year, you're not allowed to bait deer because it causes disease. But next year, the Michigan DNR will let you bait deer if you buy a permit. 
So if you have a if you buy a permit for baiting, it doesn't cause disease. But if you haven't got the permit, it could cause it. They are lying, criminal scam artists that are hurting the hunting tradition. And when you hurt the hunting tradition, those wildlife resources going from the asset column into the liability column. Shame on you. Debate me. I dare you right here on the nightly news where my crowbar of truth, logic, and common sense will end up bumping into your temple. Great week, Ted. Next week, um, I'm going to see if we can't line up a few guests. I have a doctor that I'd love to bring on. Her name is Candlin Graves. Uh, She's kind of on the front line of the COVID, the vaccines, uh, treatment for COVID. Um, I'd like to get some of these representatives on, maybe get uh, somebody else who could come talk to us on what's going on in North Dakota or, or, or Alaska. I mean, I think we need to start bringing a few guests on here. And you know what, Ted, I was discussing recently, there is a large cry uh, that would like to see us move the nightly news to television, um, which I think that's an interesting thought. Um, And I just wanted to get from you. How's your move of Spirit of the Wild going to uh, the Pursuit Network? You know, Spirit of the Wild, people have supported it with some of the highest uh, 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 ratings in the history of outdoor television. Thank you very much, Shemaine. And I thank you, Ted Nugent, Spirit of the Wild, going into our 33rd year. And now on Pursuit, where we're surrounded by the best conservationists and the best hunters and fishermen and trappers and real down-to-earth, grounded American conservationists, environmentalists. Ted Nugent, Spirit of the Wild, going into our 33rd year, now on Pursuit. And we have more audiences. We have a larger audience and more eyeballs and more enthusiasm. Plus, Dave Watson is our editor and co-producer. And Shemaine's creating these Queen of the Forest episodes. And I got some pretty handsome arrows finding their way into the pump station of unsuspecting creatures and turning them into family-sized portions. So the Spirit of the Wild is perfect hands-on conservation. Thank you, everybody. And be sure to thank my sponsors, all those people that support, all those businesses and companies and products that support Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild, world-class sporting goods, world-class products, world-class family organizations and companies. Thank you, everybody, for your support. The spirit is more wild than ever. I just got done with a hunting trip here in Texas. <laughs> my 10 arrows and one bullet, 11 beautiful kills, and the back straps are flowing like manna from heaven. God bless the mighty and you know, of- And you know what, Ted, I love about the Pursuit uh, channel is that you don't have to pay to up. There's no upcharge. You just get it. I mean, that's why so many of our viewers and our listeners, all you have to do is find it on your dish or your cable. Um, and, and it's there. You don't have to pay for it. It's not like some of these other premium channels like Outdoor Sportsman, you know, where you have to actually pay uh, a significant amount of money to get it. I mean, it's just right there at your fingertips. I've been watching your shows, Ted, as always. They're as good as they have as they have been. And the truth is, you know, Ted, I think the other programming on Pursuit has got a bad rap over these years. I think they have a nice network going on over there, and I've really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, great, great people. They're the real conservationists. They're real entrepreneurs, and they really care about the tradition and the values of hands-on conservation. So a big salute to everybody at Pursuit and everybody out there that celebrates the spirit of the wild. Thank you for your support. I'll see you at Pursuit Network. I think on our direct TV, it's uh, channel 604, but you can find it. And Keith's right. You can just get it because truth, logic, and common sense and fun in the great outdoors, it shouldn't cost you. You should just sit back and enjoy it. Now, that's why God sent me here. That's right. The cool kids are either on or watching Pursuit or soon to join Pursuit. Ted, great week. See you next week. Black Rifle Coffee salute to all the freedom lovers out there. God bless real America. I love you madly. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Tim.